Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And I was just playing around with AWS Backup Service and I thought that I should show you guys how you can actually use AWS Backup Service to back up your resources. Uh, in this video, I'm actually going to back up one of my uh, RDS uh, databases. The name is Employee Data. And I'll also show you the restore, right? So we'll first back it up using AWS Backup and then we'll restore it. So what, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll create a backup using AWS Backup and then I'm going to terminate this uh, database. And then from the AWS Backup uh, console, I'm actually going to restore this database, right? And I'm going to show this uh, using the AWS console and not the CLI. If you want, I can do a video using the CLI command as well, right? So first thing, uh, I actually have one of my EC2 instances uh, using which I'm going to connect to this RDS, right? So I'm going to connect to my RDS and first let's see what all data, sorry for the fonts, I think they're pretty small. Uh, let me see if I can increase the font, yes, I can increase the font, okay, show databases. So I have one, I've created one database called employees, right? So if I do use employees and then select, and first let me just show tables. I think it should have one table employees. I'm just going to do select star from employees so this is i'm just doing to show you that this is the data which we have in our database right so there is employee id employee name and employee designation cool now let's go to our aws backup console right and the first thing you need to do is you need to go to the settings on the left hand side and you actually have to configure your resources basically what resources you want to backup using aws backup so you just go to service opt-in, configure resources, and there is this on off toggle switch, which you can use. And you can see all the services which you can backup using AWS backup, right? So there's Aurora, Document DB, Dynamo, EVS, EC2, EFS, RDS, S3, Storage Gateway, and Virtual Machines, VMware Virtual Machine. So I only have RDS on, rest I've turned off because I'm not going to backup all these services. I'm just going to use it for backing up my RDSs, right? Okay, so that's all you need to do. Then you need to go to protected resources or you can go to dashboard. I'll just go to protected resources and I'm going to go and create an on-demand backup. So this is, the, I mean, for the first part of the video, I'm actually going to show you to create an on-demand backup and then I'll show you how you can actually do it periodically over a schedule, right? So that's, that's how this video is gonna be. So resource type will be my RDS. And the database name would be employee data, which is the name of my RDS, right? So you make sure that this create backup now is checked. Retention period, so you can just click on the info and see what retention period is about the AWS backup. So if you don't give it any retention period, it automatically saves it inf indefinitely, right? It will store it indefinitely. Otherwise you can do like days, week, months, for how long you want this data to be there. Backup vault. So backup vault is basically like a folder you can consider, right? Because AWS assumes that you are going to backup a lot of stuff using AWS backup service, right? Say for example, you are going to backup EBS volumes, you're going to backup EC2 instances, RDS, right? So putting everything in default vault or default folder is not uh, uh, what you say ideal because you should have idea about which backup is where, right? So that's how. So you can create a vault for say your EBS, uh, you can create a vault for your RDS, you can create a vault for your EC2 instances. So that's why, that's when you'll know which backup is where. So that's the concept of backup, basically backup vault. I am role, so I'm going to choose an I am role. I actually created a role for, uh, I think it was RDS, backup role, I believe. I think, yeah, this is the role. And let's create on-demand backup. So this is going to take some time. 
uh, this is actually going to take a backup of my RDS, right? And basically, this is what backup service is doing. It's taking the backup of the service, but this is this is on demand because this is triggered by me. Uh, in the next part of the video, I'll also show you how you can do scheduled backups. So I'll just pause the video and come back once this is done. So it took around four minutes for this backup to complete and you can see the status is completed. So now if you go to your protected resources, yeah, you would see employee data resource, right? It has been added and this is added on the 1st of, 1st of August, which is today, 8.16 p.m. Uh, this is from my, I think I was just playing around. So this is back, this is the resource from my older stuff, which I was doing, but this is employee data, right? So this is the RDS, which we had. All right. So now what I'm going to do here, if you go into this employee data, you would see there is, there are two backups, right? So there is RDS employee data, which is completed, I think three hours back. And then there is AWS backup job. So this RDS employee data, this is basically the automated backup which RDS takes, right? So you can see AWS backup service also has access to the automated backups which RDS takes, right? So there is a, there is option in RDS to take automated backups. So those backup are also listed over here. And then this is the backup which is taken right now by the job which we which I showed you, right? So this is what, the, what I'm going to restore. But before restoring that, I am going to basically destroy this RDS instance so that we know that we are actually doing a restore and delete. I don't want to create a final snapshot. I don't want to retain automated backups. I just want it to delete me. And since I'm deleting the automated backups, you would see that the automated backup, which was there in AWS backup console, which is basically this would be gone as well. Let's delete this. So this is again going to take some, I think three to four minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back once this is deleted. All right, so my RDS is gone. You can see I have zero instances running. Now let's go back to AWS backup console and I'm going to restore this from the latest one, which is I've just taken, All right? Let's click on this and you go to restore. This may just take a minute to basically load the console. Okay. So you can see a lot of information is there already, right? So like MySQL community addition, it actually detected a lot of stuff for you, right? And then you can select whether, what kind of availability and durability you're looking for. Multi AZ, create a standby, do not. So I'll just select, do not create a standby instance. Identifier, let's call it restore employee just so that we know that this is actually restored database. Mm, virtual private cloud, so this was an application, subnet core group for default one I've used. Public accessibility, no. Availability zone preference, no preference. Do, 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 do. rest everything I would leave as is. Mm, maintenance window, restore role. And let's choose RDS backup role for this as well. So this will start restoring and you would see on the RDS console, an instance would actually come up because it has to launch an RDS instance, right? So, but this is going to take time again, again from four to five minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back. All right, so my back restore job is still running, but on the RDS console, you can see restore employees database is created. RDS instance is created. Its status is currently backing up. So it has been created. It's just running automated backup. And this job would maybe complete in next minute or so, but we have the database, right? So let's just try and see. So let's just copy this endpoint, go back to our instance and just replace this endpoint over here. 
and you see you didn't actually have to change the password or the user or admin everything remains the same right it's just the endpoint which has changed so if i just enter the same password i should be able to connect so now let's say say show databases and we should have the employees database right and i assume everything every data would be there for just to make sure the integrity of the data i'll just do use employees and clear select star from employees all right so our data is there right everything is same so this is what i wanted to show you uh, this i think probably this job should be completed it's still running maybe the automated backup is still running yeah so automated backup is still running so once this automated backup completes you would see that this job will complete uh, before that i wanted to show you protected resources employee data and you can see since we deleted that instance rds instance the automated backup as well you don't see that over here but once this instance would be created probably the new automated backup which would be taken would show up here all right so that's how you do it on demand but what if i want to do it like as per a schedule right say every day every hour things like that right so for that they have something called backup plans so you actually need to go and create a backup plan you can start with the template so there are predefined templates like daily for 35 day retention monthly one year retention stuff like that or you can build one from scratch or you can have some json file which has uh, basically the backup plan so let's call it daily backup right and backup rule will be backup one day i can't come up with a good name let's leave the vault as default you can create a vault basically again i told you what is basically a vault is backup vault is right backup frequency i want it daily and if you want point in time recovery you need to select this else you can ignore this right but if you see if you select point in time recovery there are a lot of options which are grayed out which you cannot configure like retention period things like that all right there is one option with backup plan which is very good is copy to another region so you can actually do cross region copies or you can basically this is for maintaining high availability of your uh, database backups right so if even if you lose one region your backups are there in another region and in order to do that you should have basically a backup vault in that region so if i think it should ask for a backup vault name yeah you you see it will ask for the backup vault name in that particular region so you need to provide that but i don't want that uh where is it uh, let's remove this okay so we don't want to copy it into destination and advanced backup setting let's leave everything as is let's create the plan and i think plan is created now you need to attach resources with this so let's say these are my database backups right so just let give it a name databases you need to choose an im role which basically backup service will use to uh, take the backups i have already rds backup role and then there is this basically resource selection window so include specific type right and over here if you select specific resource type you can come here and you can select rds because i only want to back up my rds and even in that you don't want to suppose you don't want to back up all the databases you want to back up any specific so you can select that as well and and this is also a feature basically you can exclude some resources say i want to back up all databases excluding say xyz database right i don't want to back it up so you can do exclude as well and this is i think tagging and then you just assign this resource and your backups will start right 
And since we are doing point in time recovery, uh, you will not have a window basically of backup. It will basically do incremental backups. All right, so that's pretty much it. I've not actually played around with backup plans. I'll probably do a video on backup plans as well. Uh, special, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. dedicated video, video on backup plans just to be show you how hands-on it works. But that's how AWS backup service in a nutshell basically works. I think RDS should have been completed by now. Yeah, it's available. So the job, uh, if, you, if you look at the jobs, Peristo jobs, it's still running. Okay, I don't know what, this job is doing it should have been completed because we have a database available mm, I mean I'm not sure if we get the events of this job what it is trying to do no we don't get the events all right so that's pretty much it for this video I hope you guys like the video please do subscribe to the channel before leaving and thank you for watching